Hey, what's up guys, I'm KBHD here, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Camera. So the easiest way to describe this product is to take a Samsung Galaxy S3 phone, take out the ability to make phone calls, which basically gives you a mini tablet, then slap on a 16 megapixel camera and lens and a flash, and that's how Samsung Galaxy cameras are made. No, but seriously, this guy has gotten quite a bit of attention during the holiday season, and I did do an initial hands-on with this guy a few weeks ago, but my overall thoughts are still very mixed, and here's why. First off with the pros, it's a pretty decent build quality, no doubt about that. It feels durable, no creaking or anything like that. It's also relatively small. I'm not going to say it's the smallest digital camera out there, but it definitely counts as a portable camera. I suppose you could install Skype on it, and if you really wanted to, you could make calls on it, but I don't think most people are going to want to hold this thing up to their ear. It's a bit chunky, not exactly small enough to be pocketable anyway. So this begins to separate itself from other digital cameras thanks to its connectivity. This is probably the most connected camera out there right now. It's essentially a mini tablet on the back, so you can open up the bottom and throw in a SIM card and connect to Wi-Fi and 4G if you want. So you can install any app from the Google Play Store. This is a really well-connected camera. It's running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, so Project Butter is there, and it's just as responsive and fast as you'd expect it to be, just like the Galaxy S3. The user interface is also the next place it differentiates itself. It takes advantage of that 4.8 inch Super AMOLED touchscreen on the back, very different from most other cameras, and that provides a lot of room for control, so it gives you just about the same level of control as a regular digital camera. So it can take, you know, full automatic, or you can use one of the many smart modes, which acts like a preset setting for certain shooting scenarios, and most of them work pretty well if you pick correctly. And if you're really feeling daring, this camera has some full manual modes as well. It has an aperture priority mode, brightness changing mode, a full manual, or shutter priority. And whichever setting you're in, you can use the sliders to basically adjust the camera setting, and you can view the preview behind all those sliders in real time. So in full manual, you can move all these sliders, and when you feel like you have that shot dialed in, you can just tap out and take your picture. As a side note, the only issue I had with the speed of the camera was moving from a photo taking mode to a photo viewing mode. Sometimes it seemed like it took an extra second to actually do what you asked it to do once you pushed the button on the screen. Obviously things can't be instantaneous, but that's just something I noticed while I started using it. I'm sure this can be fixed also with a software update from Samsung. But the biggest drawback of this camera is, well, the camera itself. I gave it to my not-so-tech-savvy sister to take pictures during the recent holiday, so of course it was in full auto indoors, and a lot of the shots taken turned out pretty well, but the ISO is really only acceptable up to about 1600 from the sensor. Though you can go up to 6400 if you're okay with the visible noise in the image. Even though on auto there is no flash, you can hit the manual flash pop-up button, but beginners won't know this, so the shutter speed went all the way down to an eighth and a quarter of a second, so motion, motion blur ends up being a problem with some photos indoors. The video quality was also hit or miss, it really depends on the light available, just like a smartphone. There can be a few pros though, <laughs> autofocus was pretty quick during video, and for photos as well, so shots were able to be taken pretty quickly, and the 21x optical zoom is nice, that can be tremendously useful, especially outdoors. What's awkward though as a camera is that it takes micro SD cards instead of regular SD cards like a phone. So, but then again it does have 8GB of internal storage, so it's whatever you want, you might not need any cards at all. Thing is, this is supposed to be a camera first, but ironically, that's where most of its shortcomings are. In fact, the Galaxy Note 2 went shot for shot for shot for shot with this camera until we broke out that 21x optical zoom, while our phones have to rely on digital zoom. But I mean, let's face it, no other compact camera has a 1.4 gigahertz quad-core processor. No other camera has this huge 4.8 inch HD OLED touchscreen display on the back. No other camera runs Android 4.1 Jelly Bean and has full access to the Play Store with Instagram and all of its apps and games. Hardly any other cameras out there are even Wi-Fi capable. They're barely Wi-Fi capable. And this one is 4G capable and can share photos literally as they are taken to services like Instagram and Dropbox and Gmail and Google Plus. That's what makes this a different product. But for the price, this f2.8 to 5.9 lens and the slightly small 16 megapixel sensor and the image and video quality basically that this produces doesn't really match up. And I think that's where Samsung kind of swung and missed with this product. That being said, I have faith in Samsung to get it right on the next release, and I am absolutely looking forward to the Samsung Galaxy Camera 2, and that's the one I would recommend waiting for. <laughs>